Hi, I'm Dr. Marquette and I teach AP Lang. It is about 5.30 in the morning on July 5th, 2023, and the AP scores for all the different classes should have just come out, and I am super excited to see how my class did. If you want to skip right to my reaction, go to this timestamp. If you want statistics about the test in general for AP Lang this year, go to this timestamp. And for my class predictions, go here. But please go back to the beginning of the video and see an overview of the year and hear from a bunch of my students react to moments during the year and tips they have for any upcoming juniors who are going to take this class. Thanks for watching and please consider subscribing. That was very, very stressful. Kind of overwhelming. It was scary at first. I didn't really know what I was doing. It was very, very stressful. Horrific. My hand was shaking by the end of it. It was a lot more difficult than I expected. One of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Being prepared is the whole point of the entire class. The book definitely helped. Comparison to the exam, the, the practice is definitely a lot harder, in my opinion. Definitely all the timed rights and the Freitas formula. I feel like all the timed rights really got me prepared for like writing really quickly, but writing like everything that needed to be said in my essays. <laughs> Near the end, there'll be like the leading month up to it. There's gonna be mock exams. You're gonna hate it. It's gonna make the AP so much easier. You get worn out the month before, but it preps you so well, because as soon as you get into that AP test, you realize everything that you did before was way harder. On the argumentative essay, I put some good evidence, I think, a line of reasoning, some personal anecdotes, and supported my essay. It was a struggle to get started, but then I, I found like my own way. What I did was I did I planned both essays first. Like I did the planning and like organizing first, and then I like at the end I wrote both of the essays. I don't know. I felt that worked better for me. So just go through it. Like even if you hate it, you'll you'll be you'll appreciate it once you actually do the AP test. Mm -hmm. Like the prompts are like they're harder than the AP test. Yeah. most likely. In class, we examine how to read prompts correctly, so that really helps a lot. Uh, I feel good. I feel really prepared. Slightly nervous just because it's a big test, but overall I feel like I got this and I'm, just, I'm ready to go. You know, get a good night's sleep, maybe eat breakfast, give yourself that energy boost that you need in order to uh, complete the exam. My tip is that you read all the prompts first and then you make an outline for each prompt and then you write because you'll have a lot more time to, you know, write and you'll have an outline so you know what you're writing. And give yourself like hand breaks because your hand will cramp and mm -hmm. it is gonna hurt. Use the Freitas formula, of course. That helped me a lot. You don't have to stick straight to it, but use like the general format. I kind of made an outline for all of the essays first, and then I went through and wrote, and it just made the time management so much easier. And then always read the prompts before you really dive into any of them. Yeah, using that first 15 minutes efficiently is honestly like a key to just setting yourself up really well for the rest of the test. Use your breaks efficiently. Transitional words are hugely important. Learn some hand stretches, that, that will help you. Um, kind of like learning how to write fast. Honestly, the class prepares you enough. When you actually get to the exam, it seems kind of underwhelming in comparison because it's like, oh, I'm used to this. This is, this is all that I've been doing the entire year. The AP test is just kind of a cakewalk so yeah, compared just, to regular class. You know, the regular AP exam, it may seem overwhelming in terms of, you know, what you're learning up throughout the year. But once you get to it, it's like, you know, it's regular clock work and, you know, you just go, go in there, get it done, and it's pretty much that. That's it. All right, let's get into it. If you want specific details about each one of the essays, I would suggest pausing the video here. Most people earned the thesis point with anywhere from 93 to 96%. The rest of these percentages have to do with row B because that's really what makes or breaks the test. 
Rosie is not on air because, as you know, it's really difficult to get the sophistication point. So once again, these are the percentages for the entire AP Lang test. And as I get to my class's predictions, I wanted to share how they did on each one of the mock exams that we did in class. All right, so here are my class predictions. I asked them after the test to score each section, and then we used the mark sheet that helps them predict what their scores may be. Okay, so let's go to the scores. First, log into AP Central. Then go to exam, ordering, and scores. Scores at the bottom. Sign into AP for educators. Okay, here we go. Okay, not bad, not bad. All right, all right, I'll take it. So unfortunately, no one earned a five, but the good news is that our class percentage of one was really low. Also, when I add our threes and fours, the total is 50%, which is not that far off from the 56% for this year's overall test. Now, here's another one that's really kind of important. This shows all of the big ideas and skills and set types for the MCQs. And I am really, really happy with how my students did overall on this section. So as you can see on the right-hand side, uh, many of the scores indicate that my students performs better than the state average as well as better than the global. So this means that they did pretty well on, on their MCQs and I'm really happy about that. Okay, scores are in and I'm very, very proud of my students. 50% of them passed the test and for those who got a four and a three, I am so, so proud of you. But the same goes for the ones who got a one and a two. I know certainly that those students who earned a one or a two grew as writers and thinkers throughout this school year. And for that, I am really, really proud of them. This is a grueling test. You did it. You did this hard thing. If you took this class and this test seriously, that in itself is an accomplishment. It's hard. What's really important to take away is that this test is one that determines whether someone can skip English 101 and English 102 as a college freshman. If somebody scored a one or a two as a junior in high school, that just means that they are where they're supposed to be as juniors in high school. Whether you passed or whether you did not pass, I am so, so proud of you. And with that, thanks for tuning in. Consider subscribing and enjoy the rest of your summer. Bye.